Hello, boys and girls. Today, we're gonna try to solve the case of the missing Santa by conducting an experiment that's gonna identify the mysterious white substance that was found at our crime scene. Now, by now, you know that Santa was missing, but he's been found. The only problem is that somebody pushed him into a chimney, and now Christmas is on hold until we can get this crime solved. So today, you're gonna help me do that with a little science experiment. So at our crime scene, upon observation, you noticed that there was a strange white powder that was found around Santa's sack. And today, we're gonna use a chemical reaction to try to identify this strange white substance. So before we get started, you need to know that a chemical reaction is something that in science indicates that a change is taking place at the molecular level. Now that's a big word, I know, um, so don't worry about that. All you need to know is that scientists can look for evidence of a chemical change by making observations. So you know an observation is something that you notice, something that you see or smell or something that you feel in science um, that lets us know a change has taken place. So a couple of things that we need to look for when we're making observations, um, if we wanna decide if something is a chemical change or a chemical reaction has taken place, we're gonna look for bubbles, we're gonna look for smoke, Sometimes if steam comes off or we have a temperature change, that's a good indication that we have a chemical reaction. Or we might notice a color change. So maybe something turns from white to brown or white to blue. That would give us an idea that we have a chemical reaction. So today we're gonna do a little test to see if the white substance that we found at the crime scene um, undergoes a chemical change that might help to identify what that substance is. And then we're gonna take that substance once we figure out what it is, and we're gonna match it to our suspects. So we're looking at five suspects. Now, you only see four here, but remember, Santa is our victim. Uh, and he can also be considered a suspect. So what that means is the, um, the mysterious white powder could actually belong to Santa. All right, so suspect number one is Prancer, and we have suspect number two, which is Mrs. Claus, suspect number three, Henry Howard, and suspect number four is Max the Elf. So we're gonna try to figure out if one of these suspects um, was the donor of that white powder, or who left the white powder at the crime scene. So we're gonna test this substance found at the crime scene. I have a little bit here. Um, so we've got this mysterious white powder. We're gonna try to see if we can do a chemical reaction to identify, um, identify this mysterious substance. So we're looking for a chemical change. Now, before we get started, I want you to form what's called a hypothesis. So, a hypothesis in science is what we call a guess. And it can't just be a random guess, it has to be an educated guess. So, we've got to use what we know about science to try to form a guess. So, before we get started, um, what does this powder look like? Have you seen something in your everyday life that looks similar to this that might... Um, that might be similar in color or consistency, go ahead and say your guess out loud. Form a hypothesis. All right, so now we're gonna get started with our test. All right, so I have a little mat here that I'm gonna perform my test on. And before we get started, you need to know a few things. So let me put this on the screen so that you can see. I'm looking right here. Santa Claus likes to add sugar to his cocoa. So I'm, try, I'm gonna try to do a test in just a little bit to see if this is actually sugar. Now, Mrs. Claus likes to use bacon powder to make Santa's favorite, which is gingerbread cookies. So if this is positive for baking powder, that might let me know that Mrs. Claus was at our crime scene. Max the Elf works in a chalk mine. This kind of looks like chalk, doesn't it? 
And if it tests positive for chalk, then we know Max the elf was at our crime scene. Now, Prancer, who is another suspect, knows that Santa is allergic to baking soda. So if this tests positive for baking soda, we've got a problem. And then Henry Howard, who is another suspect, he used flour to make the chocolate chip cookies that he left for Santa on Christmas Eve. So we're gonna test this to see if it tests positive as flour. All right, so let's get started on our chemical reaction test. All right, so before I add the powder to our mat, um, we're gonna use water, rubbing alcohol, and vinegar to test and we're gonna see if any of these actually react with our mysterious white powder. So it only takes a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the white powder in each circle. And then we're gonna test these substances um, to see if we see so any sort of chemical reaction. So remember, a chemical reaction could come in the way of bubbles, a color change, or maybe some smoke or steam. So that's what we're looking for as we do these tests. All right, so since this says water, I'm gonna add just a few drops of water here to my mat. See if you notice any sort of change. Do we see any bubbles? Do we see a color change or any smoke? All right, and then I'm gonna try my alcohol, my rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna put a few drops. Again, we're looking for bubbles, a color change, smoke or steam. And then the third test that I'm gonna do is with vinegar. So we're gonna see if we see any smoke, bubbles, steam. Oh, we've got a little bit of action here. All right, so we see lots of bubbles. All right, now, as you look at the mat and make note of what's going on here, you need to know a couple of things. So the samples that were divided into three sections and that we formed, um, performed three tests on, these are important because if the water bubbled, then we know we have chalk. So if this were chalk, when you add the water, it would have bubbled. So we didn't see any bubbling there. So we know it's not chalk. Now, if we would have noticed bubbles or a color change when we added the alcohol, that would have let us know that we were working with flour. Okay, so if you didn't notice any bubbles or any color change here, then we know we can rule out flour. And if you were to add vinegar to the mysterious substance, um, then we know that's a positive test. If we would have saw bubbles, a color change, or smoke or steam, we would know that that's positive for baking soda. So we, since we noticed a chemical change here, a chemical reaction, we now have a positive test for baking soda. So you can use that to try to figure out who was the donor of the white powder that was found at the crime scene 